Hey everybody, this is Rishi Agrawal, and today we're going to be talking about the differential diagnosis of multiple pulmonary nodules. And this talk builds on the knowledge of my previous video on the secondary pulmonary lobule, so if you aren't already familiar with the anatomy of the secondary pulmonary lobule, I suggest that you go watch that video before watching this one. So one important thing to keep in mind is that this approach is used to diagnose multiple pulmonary nodules, not just one or two or a few nodules. And the reason is we're going to be basing our diagnosis on where that nodule or those nodules lie with respect to the secondary pulmonary lobule. So it doesn't really do us any good if there's only one or two or a few. All right, to start off, let's talk about the three different distributions of pulmonary nodules. Those are central lobular nodules, perilymphatic nodules, and random nodules. This right here is something called tree and bud, and this is a subset of central lobular nodules. Okay, So when you're looking at an actual case for the first time and you see a lot of nodules, the first thing you want to do is determine if there are many nodules that are touching the interlobular septa, the fissures, or the peribronchovascular structures. And if they are, then you're looking at perilymphatic disease. In the previous video, I told you that the interlobular septa contain the pulmonary veins and lymphatics, but lymphatics can also be found in what's called the axial interstitium, which includes the bronchi and the pulmonary artery. So even though these are central lobular structures, if you see multiple nodules studying, studying the bronchi or the pulmonary artery, that's still considered perilymphatic disease. Now on the other hand, central lobular nodules will spare the interlobular septa and the pleural surfaces. So if you see a bunch of nodules and you see about a one or two millimeter clear space between the nodules and the septa or the fissures, then that means you're probably looking at central lobular disease. Okay, so it's best to just look at a few examples. So let's start with this case. Okay. As I'm scrolling through this case, I'm seeing many nodules, and I'm not really interested in these large nodules. I'm really interested in these small nodules. And these small nodules seem to be studying the vessels, and they seem to be along the fissures. So I would say that these nodules have a perilymphatic distribution, because they seem to be clustered along the peribronchovascular structures and along the fissures. And another way to look at it is to look at the sagittal images. And on the sagittals you could see that many of these nodules seem to be occurring along the fissure. And if we go to the right side we, we could see it even better. Many nodules along the minor fissure, the major fissure here. So these have a perilymphatic distribution. Now, of course, the other big clue here is if we look at the soft tissue windows, we could see that there are multiple enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes and hilar lymph nodes, and not only that, but many of them are heavily calcified. So this is a case of sarcoid, and sarcoid is one of the prototypical examples of a disease in which the nodules have a perilymphatic distribution. The other common things in that differential include silicosis, co-workers pneumoconiosis, and lymphangitic spread of cancer. Let's take a look at another example. So in this person I'm seeing nodules already in the apices, and these nodules abut the pleural surface. There's a calcified nodule. And then there's some nodules here, tiny ones, that are abutting the major fissure. You could see them here. So already I could tell you that this is not a patient with central lobular nodules, okay, because there's too many nodules that are along the fissure and along the costal pleura. The only question is whether this is truly a perilymphatic distribution or whether it's random. And I'm just going to have to scroll down more to see if I can convince myself that this is truly a perilymphatic distribution of nodules. And right here, actually, I'm seeing a secondary pulmonary lobule. Here's the central bronchus, and this is the interlobular septation. And you can see that there's nodules along the interlobular septa. And as I scroll up more, I'm seeing more 
interlobular septal thickening with nodules along the interlobular septa. So that convinces me pretty well that what I'm looking at is a perilymphatic distribution of nodules. Let's take a look at the mediastinum and see what else we can find. Put it on soft tissue windows. We can see that there's multiple calcified lymph nodes in the hyla and in the mediastinum. Some of these calcifications have a short, sort of eggshell type of appearance, and that's something you could see with silicosis, although you could also see it with sarcoid. This person did have a history of silica exposure at work, and this was a patient with silicosis. All right, in this case, we see many nodules in the right upper lobe, and one characteristic about them is that they're ground glass in attenuation. So that pretty much rules out perilymphatic nodules. Perilymphatic nodules are pretty much always going to be solid in attenuation. So the only question with these is whether we're looking at central lobular nodules or random nodules. And if you look closely, you could see that there is one or two millimeters of sparing of these central peribronchovascular structures, the bronchus and the artery, and there's also one or two millimeters of sparing of the costal pleura here. So that indicates that we are looking at central lobular nodules. Now if we keep looking here, another thing that you'll see are these branching structures with smaller solid nodules at the end of the branches. And this is a feature called tree and bud. And tree and bud is a subset of central lobular nodules. So when you have central lobular nodules with tree and bud opacity, that almost always means that you're looking at an infectious process. It's not specific for an etiology. You could be looking at TB. It could be a garden variety bacterial infection. It could be fungal infection. But it pretty much always means that you are looking at some kind of infectious process. Now let's go back to this diagram and talk about random nodules. Random nodules are going to be nodules that seem to touch the pleura, they touch the interlobular septa, they can touch the central bronchovascular structures, but they're not going to be clustered around those areas like perilymphatic disease, and they're not going to uniformly spare those structures like in central lobular disease. Okay, so random nodules are going to have no apparent pattern to them. So as opposed to central lobular disease where the nodules are spread along the airways, in random nodules, the nodules are spread via the bloodstream hematogenously. So the differential for random nodules includes things like metastatic disease and miliary infection, such as miliary TB. Now in this case, there are multiple small pulmonary nodules. So in trying to decide what the distribution is, we're going to look first at the pleura. And we could see that there are some nodules that touch the pleura, but they don't seem to be clustered along the pleura. Some nodules touch the pleura, some nodules seem to be sparing the pleura. So in this example, there is no real definitive distribution, and these I would consider random in distribution. Now the other big clue here is that there's a large area of consolidation and even cavitation in that consolidation. And this is a patient with miliary TB. Finally, I want to show this chart which summarizes everything we just talked about. And this is taken from an article in CHEST in 2006, and I'll link to that in the description. But when you're looking at multinodular disease, the first question you want to ask yourself is, are those nodules touching the pleura or the fissures? And if the answer is yes, and they seem to be clustered along those areas, then you're looking at perilymphatic nodules, and the big things in the differential there are sarcoid, silicosis, and co-workers. If they don't seem to be clustered along the fissures and pleura, then you're probably looking at random nodules, in which case the differential is metastatic disease or miliary infection. Now if they seem to be sparing the pleura or fissures, then the next question you want to ask is, do you see tree and bud? because tree and bud is a great sign of some type of infection. If you don't see tree and bud, you still could be looking at an infection, 
but you also want to expand your differential into things like subacute HP and respiratory bronchiolitis. Now that's going to be it for this video. If you read any chest CT at all, I highly recommend that you read the article that I referenced earlier, which I'll link to below. I'm also going to make another video showing more examples of some of the other things in the differential diagnosis. If you have any questions about this topic, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can direct message me on the About page of this channel. Thanks a lot.